Good morning. It's another week of Rebuilding Business, a series of interviews with highly acclaimed entrepreneurs and leaders in their field to help you to learn about uh, how do you build a phenomenal business or survive in these challenging times. And this week on Tuesday, we're proud to have Britain's best boss, Chris Brindley. Uh, Chris has held leadership roles in a number of high profile black brands, including NatWest, British Gas, Metro Bank. And he's also a portfolio NED and chair in businesses and sports. Uh, many of you will already know that he's a board member of the Rugby League Football Clubs, uh, also the chair of Rugby League World Cup 2021 that we're looking forward to, and a senior Ned of the Manchester Football Association. Chris, yesterday we talked about business planning and today we're looking at managing and maintaining business performance, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really crucial this bit, isn't it? And, and I think the thing I really wanted to ask you about is you might have a vision, you might have something amazing that you want to do with your business, or even in, in these days, it might be just survival. But how do you get people on board the bus to believe in what you believe in and drive high performance in the businesses that they lead? I think there's a, there's a great clip that I'd recommend to everybody, which is Simon Sinek, uh, who talks about the why. Uh, ultimately, uh, people come to work for a reason. Uh, and I want to create a cause uh, whether it's the charities that uh, I'm involved in, whether it's the not-for-profit that I'm involved in, or whether it's the businesses that support or the sports that are working, ultimately it's about cause, and that's making a positive difference to other people's lives. Um, and that's why people um, often go on the pitch to play, uh, knowing that there's an audience either live in the stadiums, not at the moment, but in the future, or whether there's a TV audience, or whether it's just somebody at home that has a passion to follow what you do and how you do it. So typically, um, people have to be connected to the cause. And I think it's the leader's role to, to be able to explain the cause. And let's be really clear, cause should never be that word profit. Uh, profit is a byproduct of doing amazing things um, with your own people for other people. Because I think businesses ultimately um, exist to serve. And I just really want to talk about that with my team, understanding the positive impact we can have on other people's lives and, and that I think again is really really important for leaders to just spend a bit of time thinking about and crafting why uh, do we do what we do uh, and who can benefit from it both uh, colleagues employees uh, but also customers or consumers. Now, I, I get that emotional connection with the, with the team on the pitch, you know, and we're all really fervently passionate, aren't we, about, about who we support. Um, and you uh, were, I think, you were voted when you were head of NatWest, the most outstanding workplace at the National Business Awards to work. But what about if you, uh, and I, I'm not underplaying the importance of widgets or, you know, or screws or whatever, you know, manufacturing uh uh, uh, role that we have in in creating product what about if you do have something where you think well I just put screws in a box how do, how do you create that connection there well there's an amazing story Lily I, I, I do a presentation on the on the lessons from the Apollo missions 1961 to 1969 uh, it, it is about achieving the perceived unachievable which is land, we landed man on the moon and brought them back safely uh, in 69, in 61, we hadn't even gone into space. Yeah, in that time scale, we achieved something special. And there's a great story um, about uh, a janitor at NASA. And he was asked by a leading uh, American official, what is it you do? And his answer was, I help put men on the moon and bring them back safely. Whereas uh, the, the people who quite haven't got belief or vision or caring or compassion would have probably told him, actually, he's of no importance because he just sweeps floors. No, he didn't. He actually created the environment by which other people can thrive. Uh, again, there's lots of people that help um, others achieve. Never underplay the part of the people in the back room because without them, you can't do it. And at, at NatWest, I used to share my uh, customer service scores with the people who clean the branches because yeah. they were part of the team. And without them, we couldn't. Uh, achieve uh, ultimate success so I think whether you're doing widgets or you're playing at elite sport um, the part you and others play come together to create the outcome never yeah. underestimate that yeah 
Yeah. Um, I, yeah, actually, I was, talk, I was able to talk to Kevin Gaskell recently, who was the youngest ever MD of Porsche. Uh, and similarly, uh, at BMW took BMW to incredible success. But he talked, he would talk about the guy who was the driver who would pick him up, who had some amazing ideas, or the cleaner that would come in and say, oh, you know, we've got recession around the corner then. And Kevin would say, really? You know, we're doing amazing. No, look at it. It's all cyclical. And actually, that really listening to and creating the conditions for everybody to feel that they're part of, of and connected to the whole is, is massively important, isn't it? Um, you do talk about, I know one of the critical things for you is making sure that we're measuring that success, isn't it? There's there's something that you use, I think, which is the balanced scorecard quite regularly. Can you just share with me why that's important and how you use it? Yeah, my, my, my first experiences um, in business as, as I was growing up and, and starting my career, people would talk about the financials all the time. And I'd see some really, really poor decisions made uh, because it was all about financials and cost, um, whether that was slashing expenses or just not looking after people uh, in the staff room. And I really wanted to explore what, what was the real skill in successful businesses. Uh, and the successful businesses apply the balanced scorecard. And typically it's broken down into four quadrants, Lily. Um, and the first one for me is, is, is always uh, the people quadrant, the people who um, others might call employees or workers or whatever, but it's people, the people who you have the privilege of leading, because ultimately, if you get that bit right, then there's a great um, model called the service profit chain, which I encourage people to look at, which is look after your people who are going to look after your customers. Mm -hmm. So I typically look at uh, the people who I have the privilege of leading or working with. Secondly, I then look at the customer or the consumer quadrant, because ultimately consumers through their ability to do business with you will determine whether or not your business will be successful or not. Yeah. Then thirdly, I'd look at the internal quality, which was how our operations works and, and how easy is it uh, for customers to do business with us? What type of technology would we do? How do we communicate? I'd also look at risks under that. So anything that's internal and based on quality is the third quadrant. Then the final quadrant is the financial quadrant. Because if you get your people delivering great stuff for customers with a really slick and smart operation that's easy for customers to do business with, quite frankly, you'll have lots of customers that will do business and part with money. So your financials tend to look after themselves. Of course, you then need to manage your costs. You need to look at cost of to serve and cost of distribution um, and operating costs. But ultimately, I'm a great believer that profit is a byproduct. Great people giving great service to customers in a really smart way. And ultimately, the financial quadrant looks after itself. Now, I, I, and I, I love that. For me, it's, it is all about people. It's all about relationship. As a, you know, as a behavioural strategist, we look at the behaviours that we have, who we've got in the team, how aligned are they with our values, how clear are they around what they're, they're supposed to be doing, and, and have we given them the skills and the, and the opportunity to develop in order to be brilliant in their role. Um, but lots of people talk about, oh, I've got to get my performance management right. You know, I'm, I need to work on our appraisal systems not right, and I need to performance manage him or her to be better. I, I, I hate the word performance management because I believe people manage themselves yeah. if we create the conditions. Um, how do you create the conditions for your teams to be brilliant in all the organisations you work with? Well, it is about um, looking after people. There's a great phrase by Mark McCormack, uh, who created a huge company called IMG. He said, when all things are equal, people do business with people they like. Mm. He then went on to say, when things are unequal, people still do business with people they like. And I'd add trust to that um, for, for both of those statements. So ultimately, it is, it's, it's not about driving performance. You don't drive performance, you drive a car. It's about creating an environment where people want to come to work to actually do a great job for their colleagues, for their customers, for their community. Um, for themselves and their families um, and actually that's what gets you connected with the business so th this bit about managing performance um, if, if people wait to give feedback um, at appraisal time and they use <laughs> bonkers phrases like constructive criticism I'm really clear out of those two words there's one word that's heard 
and it isn't constructive. So don't yeah. use words like constructive criticism. If you want somebody's performance to be better, give them some feedback. If they're doing really well and you'd like it to continue, give them some feedback. The word's feedback. And it's about making people better at who they are and what they do. And if they're doing it to a really high standard, it's acknowledging and recognising that, even by using my favourite two words, which are thank you. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely nugget today. Uh, we're going to work tomorrow on building the team. So thanks so much for uh, the opportunity for today. Let's uh, let's meet with you in the morning. Hope you have a great afternoon. See you in the morning, Lily. Take care. Take Bye. Care. Bye.